welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today as part of ecg learning we'll talk about heart blocks first degree second degree third degree different types of heart blocks so normally you all know that from sa node the electrical activity go to the ab node from there it will go to the conduction system bundle of his now, that is a normal conduction from the uh, sa node to ab node so this is sa node AB node and bundle of phase. Normally, SA node will produce a, a P wave, then QRS complex, then it goes on like that. So, if there is a conduction delay here in this area, if there is a conduction delay, you can see the same delay here also. That we will see how it happens and how different types of uh, hard blocks look in ECG, like we, we can see. Now, there are three important types of heart blocks, first degree heart blocks, second degree heart blocks, third degree heart blocks, they are called as AV blocks also sometimes. Now, conduction system I already told from SA node, that is a electrical activity produced in your heart, from there it will go to the AV node, from AV node it will go to the ventricle through bundle of his, okay. So, that produces, SA node produces P wave, then AV node and ventricle produces QRS complex, then P wave like that, okay. So, P wave to QRS complex, this time is called as PR interval, okay. The all problem happens here, the time taken from SA node to AV node, that, that is PR interval and the problems are happening actually in this conduction system to produce types of blocks. Now, we already told that the electrical activity get activated in the SA node, then it spreads all over the atrium, then it go to the ventricle like this. So, you can see here electrical activities from here it starts, then reaches here, then reaches the QRS complex, then the ventricle. Okay, so that is a conduction of electricity in your heart and that produces changes in the ECG. If there is a problem or obstruction in this conduction can produce different types of heart blocks. So, here what you are seeing is here in this ECG is PR interval from the onset of P to the onset of QRS complex that is PR interval. This is PR segment but this is PR interval. So, you can see here one small square, two small square, three small squares, four small squares. So, the normal duration is three to five small squares. Here it is only four, then it is normal. So, the time taken for that is only four squares or five squares maximum. So, that is normal. So, PR interval onset of uh, P to onset of QRS complex. Normal interval is 120 to 200 milliseconds that in terms of uh, small squares it is 3 to 5 small squares. You can easily remember 3 to 5 small squares. Now, if there is a problem in the conduction system like here, SA node to AV node conduction is fast. So, you take only 3 to 5 small squares from the onset of P to onset of QRS complex, it takes maximum 3 to 5 squares. But if there is a problem in the conduction, what happens? This is the SA node, then there is a problem in the conduction, there is some defect in the conduction system to AV node. What happens is the time taken to produce a QRS complex also is more. So, this will be more than 5 small squares. So, here normally is 3 to 5 small squares, here it is more than 5 small squares. So, you can, here you can see 1, 2, 3 squares. So, 3 to 5 is normal, 3 and half is the, 3 and half is the duration of PR interval, 3.5 small squares is the duration. But whereas in this ECG what you are seeing is onset of P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 squares are there. So, it is more than 5 squares, here it is 9 squares, 
and small squares. So that is prolongation of PR interval. This is actually occurring due to a partial block somewhere here. We don't know what type of block it is, but there is a partial defect in the conduction system that produces little more prolonged PR interval. This is called as first degree art block. What you should understand is there are some drugs like beta blockers, diltiazem, verapamil, digoxin. All drugs actually act here and they reduce the conduction. If the patient is already on some of these drugs, the reason may be due to that and sometimes you, we may have to stop the drug. If the patient is symptomatic or if it is more long PR interval, we will have to stop it. But better if we are finding this problem, better to avoid this type of drugs in first degree art block because sometimes this block can be aggravated due to your treatment itself. Now this is first degree art block, you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 small squares in between P and QRS complex that is more than 5 squares. This is first degree hard block. Now there are lot of reasons for hard blocks in that what are reasons we can see increased vagal tone, athletic training, inferior wall myocardial infarction, mitral valve surgery, myocarditis, electrolyte imbalance like hyperkalemia. AV nodal blocking drugs like what we have told, discussed previously, previous slide, beta blockers, calcium ion blockers, digox, nametron, and sometimes it can be normal variant. But the main thing what, sh what you should do is, if the patient is already on these drugs, we have to monitor this patient. Patient should not go to second degree heart block. And if the patient is not on these drugs and you are uh, going to treat this patient for hypertension or something like that, don't initiate this type of drugs because it can sometimes produce more problem. And if it is due to hyperkalemia, you have to correct it. Some viral myocarditis uh, also or bacterial myocarditis also can produce this type of problem. Now what you are seeing here is, the, you can see here, there is P wave, PR interval is long, then QRS complex then P wave, again P wave. So, PR interval is prolonged more than 5 small squares. You can call it as first degree heart block. You have to search for any reasons for that. Try to avoid beta blockers, rate limiting calcium channel blockers, all these things. Now, what is second degree heart block? Previously, we have seen that mild problem in the conduction system, but that was persisting. Here, there is a problem in the conduction system and that blocks actually QRS complex, the spreading of the current from the atria to ventricle is blocked during some of the conduction, not in all conduction, some of the conductions are blocked. What you are seeing here is, there is a P wave here, there is another P wave here. This P wave is conducted properly to ventricle, SA node to AV node, AV node to ventricle is conducted properly. But here what is happening is, SA node to AV node conduction is not properly conducted and actually we should have got another conduction here that is not there. Here it is cut. Okay. Not all beads have that problem. This is conducted normally. This is conducted normally. But in between some uh, P waves are not conducted properly. So, there is no QRS complex that has to happen here. That is not happening. Okay. So, that is second degree art block. Some of the QRS complexes are missing in the ECG rhythm strip means there is a complete blockage of some of the conductions like this. Not all conduction, if all conductions are blocked, then it will become third degree art block. So one of one or two QRS complex are missing in an ECG lead with a properly formed P wave, you can call it as second degree hard block. Now, second degree hard block itself, there are two different types, Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. Mobitz type 1 is called as Wengebach's phenomenon. So, we will see what is Wengebach phenomenon. The first conduction will be normal here, SA node, AV node. Second conduction is slightly delayed due to some reason, fatigue of the conduction system. The third is little more delayed. Fourth, it is not conducted. Okay, it is like that. 
So, first PR interval is P2 PR interval is normal, second PR interval is slightly prolonged, third PR interval is little more prolonged. Okay, so it is increasing, it is increasing, and last conduction is not happening. Next P is coming. So, here we should have got the QRS complex that is not coming. So, progressive prolongation of PR interval and sudden drop of one QRS complex. Here you can see here one QRS complex is dropped. So, this is small, this is little larger, PR interval is still larger and fourth one is completely dropped. This is called as Wenckebach's phenomenon or Mobitz type 1 hard block. So, what you are seeing here is a classical Wenckebach's phenomenon. So, you can see here P, PR interval is okay, PR interval is slightly prolonged, little more prolonged, there is no QRS complex. But P is still there. So, that is uh, Wenckebach's phenomenon. Now, you can see here what is Wenckebach's phenomenon? You can see here, uh, you can see here PR interval is shorter, larger, and one QRS complex is dropped here. PR interval is shorter, larger, little more larger, again larger. Here one is dropped. Okay. So we cannot predict where it is dropped, but progressively the PR interval is prolonging and suddenly one QRS complex is dropping. That is called as Wenckebach's phenomenon. It's a type 2 uh, hard block, Mobitz type 2 hard block, uh, sorry, type 2 hard block. In that uh, second degree hard block, uh, type 2 hard block we are going to tell, that is Mobitz type 2. Previously we have seen Mobitz type 1, that is Wenckebach's phenomenon, this is type 2. Here actually there is no conduction delay happening here. You can see here, PR interval is almost same in all the complexes. But suddenly, one QRS complex is missing here. Okay. So, there is no progressive prolongation of PR interval. Suddenly, one QRS complex is missing after the P wave. This is called as Mobitz type 2 second degree hard block. Okay. Whereas, Wenckebach's phenomenon, progressive prolongation of PR interval. So, here you can see, here you can see, one is missed here. Okay. So, that is progressive prolongation, that is Wenckebach's or Mobitz type 1, this is Mobitz type 2. Now, Mobitz type 1, type 2, uh, you can see here Mobitz uh, type 1, there is progressive prolongation of PR interval, here one QRS complex is missing here, whereas here oh, there is no progressive prolongation, all are equal, suddenly you are missing one, uh, this one. In that Mobitz type 2 or type 1, both condition, that is second degree hard block itself, there can be high degree hard block, high degree hard block, here you are seeing after 4 or 5 beats, one is missing, but here what is there, uh, you are missing beats everywhere, so lot of QRS complex is missing. The problem with that is, the, actually when the QRS complex forms only, the ventricle pumps properly and blood is ejected out from our heart to systemic circulation. If the ventricle is not pumping adequately, then this patient can have features of hypotension, shock, all these things. If this ventricle beats are missing very frequently, then he will become symptomatic. This is called as high grade second degree heart block. So, very high levels of heart block in second degree itself, that is high grade second degree heart block. So, Mobitz type 2 that is second degree heart block and sinus pose, both are different, you should not confuse with these two. Sinus pose is, so Mobitz type 2 is all beats are conducting to SNO2 AV node then bundle, all are conducting and suddenly one will conduct only up to here and there is no, nothing happens after that. So here you get P wave, QRS complex, here you get P wave, QRS complex. But here you get P wave, but there is no QRS complex. Whereas sinus pause means, so all these things, P, P wave is there, there is a QRS complex. P wave is there, there is a QRS complex. P wave is there, there is a QRS complex. But there is no P wave, there is no QRS complex. Both are missing. This is called a sinus pause. This is different from your Mobitz type 2 because there is a P wave here, but there is no P wave in sinus pause. 
there is no qrs complex here there is no qrs complex here but p waves are formed in mobitz type 2 p waves are not formed in sinus pause both are different sinus pause means both atrium and ventricle is not activated that is sinus pause now this ecg what you are seeing is so here pr interval is okay pr interval is okay one qrs complex is missing so pr interval is okay pr interval is okay pr interval is okay pr interval is okay one qrs complex is missing so that is mobitz type mobitz type 2 second degree heart block now av block third degree means atrium beats in its own rate ventricle also beats in its own rate the problem here atrium is producing current but that never reaches to the ventricle due to some problem here it is blocked it is blocked so what happens is when the atrium is beating and the current is not reaching to the ventricle ventricle has to pump it it will take over the function normally when the atrium is not uh, conducting is from the atria current is not conducting to the ventricle ventricle itself will take over the function of pumping or electrical activity so what you are seeing is atrium is acting regularly so this is your rhythm strip atrium acting regularly if you see the pp interval that will be normal but it is not conducted to the ventricle so ventricle will be will also be acting so you should remember the intrinsic rate of the heart intrinsic rate of the heart for the atrium it is somewhere around 70 72 73 74 75 whereas in ventricle the rate is somewhere around 40 45 like that so just half of the atrial conduction will be ventricular conduction so every two p waves you may get one qrs complex so this p and this qrs complex there is no association so just see this QRS complex are coming regularly. So, if you see the uh, length of RR interval may be equal, most of the time it will be equal. But there is no association between P and QRS complex. So, atria beats in its own rhythm, ventricle beats in its own rhythm, but it is lower than the atrial rhythm. But there is no association between atrium and ventricle, it is completely cut off from the atrium. That is why it is called as complete AV block. So, third degree heart block you can see here, P waves are marching regularly. So, P is coming, P is coming, P is coming, P is coming, regularly it is coming. QRS complex, they are also coming regularly. You can see here, they are coming regularly, but there is no association between P and QRS complex. Now, this is called as complete heart block. P waves are coming regularly. Sometimes P waves can be inside the R wave itself. So, you have to clearly see this P is inside the R wave. Okay. Sometimes it may be in the QRS complex also. We do not know. So, P waves come regularly. Here also P wave comes in the R wave. So, P waves come regularly. QRS complex come regularly. Maybe half of the rate of the P wave. But there is no association between P and QRS complex. So, here also you can see. P waves come regularly, QRS complex come regularly, rate is half of the QRS complex and if you see the rate of the ventricle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 300 by 8 will give you the rate, okay. So, it may be somewhere around uh, 38 or 40, that will be the rate of the ventricle, okay. So, it is bradycardia. Now, here you can see uh, there is uh, atrial fibrillation, but the QRS complex are coming regularly. The rate is very low, maybe uh, 38 or 35. That sometimes, normally in atrial fibrillation, what happens is even if the rates are very much controlled, then also you can have some uh, irregularity in the QRS complex. If the rate is controlled also with digoxin or something, the QRS complex will not be regular. In atrial fibrillation, if the QRS complex are regularly coming, then the rate is very low. You have to suspect complete heart block, heart block with atrial fibrillation. So, how do you manage this problem? Whenever there is 
bradycardia, whatever may be the reason, yesterday we are told about uh, 5 H's and 5 T's, whatever may be the problem, first response is always atropine. We can try atropine, but you should understand that if there is a degenerative conduction system, patient may not respond to your atropine, then pacemaker will be the uh, choice of treatment. There are two types of pacemakers, one is temporary pacemaker, another one is permanent pacemaker. So temporary pacemakers like uh, poisoning, toxicological problem or patient on drug overdose, temporary pacing will be enough. If there is a conduction system abnormality, then you will have to go for permanent pacemaker. Now this is a permanent pacemaker, you can see here permanent pacemaker uh, on the side of the heart we have kept a pacemaker from there uh, the conduction happens to the heart, pacemaking can be done. But remember all patients we need to give atropine, atropine 1 mg can be given, uh, other drugs also can be tried, adrenaline can be tried, uh, isoprenaline can be tried. Uh, if uh, your transcutaneous pacing is not available and if you have a pacing ability, then go for transcutaneous pacing, transvenous pacing, temporary. Then permanent pacemaker may be required in many patients. So that will be the treatment for uh, complete heart block or high grade second degree heart block. So these are the treatment options. So what we have uh, discussed is one of the important problem in emergency room that is uh, acute bradycardia. Acute bradycardia can be treated with initially with atropine, then if you are not able to control with that, find out 5 H and 5 T's, you can treat that. If the still the patient is not improving, you will have to go for pacing. Thank you.